Hey guys, welcome to my Dragon Slayer 2 guide video. Um, this is a video that's being made on a very quick notice, um, but it is a detailed walkthrough on how to do the quest. So, to get here, first you need to get to the Myths Guild, and one of the best ways is probably using a spirit tree, uh, and then you just need to talk to Alec, who is near the Myths Guild. So, do the second option how to access the guild, and just press continue. <coughs> By the way, put on whatever music you want in the background. I'm just going to be talking. There's going to be quite a lot of silent uh, phases as well. So you say you're going to help him, and that will make you start Dragon Slayer 2. So some of the items that you need are all in the description. Um, I won't list them out here, but I have quite a few in my inventory, and I will try to keep uh, you guys aware of them at the time. So after you've talked to Alec, you want to use a Glory Charge to Karanja and run south. Once you want south, you want to go towards the pub area, and you want to talk. <clears throat> you want to talk to Dallas Jones, who is here. So Dallas Jones, you have talked to him. Press continue. Press continue. And um, some of the chat boxes were quite slow in this because I was actually reading it. So yeah, choose the second option. and then you're done so now we need to actually go back to Olvog's lair from Dragon's Lair 1 so we can just walk up from here so you run up northwest towards the um, dungeon sign so once you're at the dungeon sign go down the rocks so climb down the rocks and then go west towards Elvog's lair By the way, if I sound quite sleepy and tired, I'm extremely tired. This has taken about four hours to upload, literally taken absolutely ages. Um, and it's like two o'clock in the morning right now. So um, that's that really. Anyway, continue going north and you will be at Elvog's lair. So just climb over the wall. Um, for this bit, you do need a pickaxe and talk to Dallas Jones before you do anything so you go in, talk to Dallas Jones, hit continue with the space bar and then you use your pickaxe onto this crumbly blockage area in the north uh, north corner northeast corner, so you enter the tunnel and you'll be in a different place and Dallas Jones will automatically talk to you keep hitting continue um, <clears throat> Once you've hit continue and you finish the conversation, head north and investigate the ancient mural. Once you do that, you will get attacked by a level 100. Um, I actually had nothing on me here, and you can see how close it was. Um, but anyway, I got it killed. So you, once it's killed, you just talk to Dallas Jones again, and he will talk about something, and just press continue all the way. So what he wants you to do is go to the house on the hill. So on Fossil Island, the best way to do this is use a dig site pendant um, and teleport straight to the house on the hill. Uh, you can actually climb down the trapdoor and you'll find Dallas Jones once again. And he basically says, uh, so you choose option one. Um, and basically, essentially, there's a map that we need to do over here. But first, he wants us to find some notes or some map pieces, um, and I'm going to go through those pieces now. So there's 24 all together. First, what you want to do is on the same floor, you want to search the chest in the north corner. So just in the same floor where Dallas Jones has searched this chest in the north corner, and you should get five pieces from there. And just use the map pieces back on Dallas Jones, and he'll take them all. Um, I didn't actually have enough invent space, you could do all of this in one go, but I just found the pieces, went back to Dallas Jones. Um, as I said, this is the first time doing this quest and it was really tricky, um, so making a quest guide is not going to be the most efficient at this moment. So if you go back up to the normal ground floor, you can search that chest in the north corner there and you'll find another three pieces. And then just use them back on Dallas Jones again. After you've done those three, we're going to go back up to the top, to the ground floor. So just go up the stairs in the southeast corner, <coughs> climb up the ladder, 
once you're back up on the normal floor you want to go to the west side and down the stairs outside and just near the stairs just north of the stairs you'll find um, some more map pieces so just search the fun guy there and then I go back to Dallas Jones so back down the trap door and then use the pieces on Dallas Jones again um, and just final few pieces uh, so back upstairs then go down the stairs once again and then go around south of the building the house and we should find some over here and once again as I said this was this isn't the most efficient guide um, so I would actually recommend watching this a couple of minutes before you doing this in real time um, so for example if you had more inventory space here you could have done all of these in one go um, but to be honest um, it doesn't make too much of a difference so I use those map pieces on Dallas Jones go back up again descend the stairs once again and this time you want to go all the way east of the house so you make your way all the way to the east and you should find some more map pieces um, over there so you can see in the clips in the background obviously I'm clicking all over the place um, there was no guys at this time um, there was only the OSRS wiki but that was very very basic literally the first few hours um, and so it was not very helpful at all so all of this it was a lot of guess guesswork as well at the same time um, so that's why it's not the most efficient guide but it's a guide that should certainly help you finish the quest and make it very easy for you so with these final map pieces I go back up the stairs I climb down the ladder and I use them on Dallas Jones and that should be all the map pieces done so just keep pressing continue and go for the first option on let's do it and this is the map so I've put up on the side of this screen here um, what the final map should look like as you can see I'm clicking on some of the squares and that actually rotates them so you can rotate those um, and you can also drag the squares along like I'm doing there so you can drag the squares into a different position um, and that will move them into that position and then you can rotate them accordingly so the map is on the screen now that's the map you want to copy essentially um, and I've just fast forwarded it fast forwarded me doing it in the background um, so you could pause this um, and take a look at the map and just try to do it yourself it shouldn't take too long it's quite frustrating um, because you have to rotate these shapes as well as move them around um, but it's not too bad so just have a go at that Okay, so once you finish the puzzle, you'll automatically get a message saying that's done now, and um, you just need to keep on hitting continue. So after you hit continue, what we need to do is we want to um, go to a dwarf. So I just use my dig site pendant and go back to the dig site and find my way back to Fossil Island. By the way, to get the dig site pendant, you just need to uh, enchant a ruby necklace. And the requirement for Dragon Slayer 2 is Bone Voyage. So you've done this whole um, boarding the foreman here and then traveling by these navigators to get to Fossil Island. So that's all you do. And you can actually use your um, dig site pendant to teleport straight to the house on the hill as I did previously. So we talk to Jardwick here, who's literally just at the beginning of the Fossil Island. You just talk to him and he will talk about a boat that you need to fix um, and so for this you will need the 8 oak planks the swamp paste saw 12 nails of any kind and a hammer um, and then you want to just run all the way to the west side um, and through the woods and then slightly north so slightly northwest from here um, and there should be a boat so I just use the map page you can see where the transportation sign is that's where you need to go
So once you're at the boat, you just need to click uh, build on the boat, and if you have the items that I told you, um, you should be able to build it. Sometimes you might need more than uh, 12, 12 nails, just in case you bend a few, so just bring about 20. So the boat is finished, and then you'll talk to Dela Jones, and you will talk to the dwarf as well, and you'll say, yes, I'm ready to travel to the island. <clears throat> so this is the Lithgren Island. Um, you'll automatically talk to Dallas Jones here, and Dallas Jones will just go on his own um, and just try to explore the island. So what you need to do now is you actually just walk north from here, and you want to find some stairs. <clears throat> so that ladder's broken. You want to carry on going north and slightly west, and you should see some stairs there. So climb up those stairs. Once you go up those stairs, you want to go south and go down the trapdoor. Once you're down the trapdoor, you need to go down some staircase just north of that and then walk north. Once you're north, you should find a really large door and you should find Dallas Jones after you climb some stairs downwards. So just talk to Dallas Jones once again <coughs> and just hit continue. So after you continue, just on the east side, there should be a skeleton there. You just want to search the skeleton and you'll find a diary. Click on the diary and just read it by clicking on the right arrow and then talk back to Dallas Jones. So after you hit continue, you suggest you want to find Bob. Um, and this is where in the other quest where you use the cat speak amulet to locate Bob. So you just click locate and try to find Bob. He's in random locations. Um, you've done it before, so just try to find Bob in that same manner. So I actually found Bob here at the Ice Mountain. You talk to Bob and Bob will just say random things. Just hit continue um, and keep your fingers on the space bar. And then they want you to go to soften him to speak to the Sphinx. So the best way to get there, um, well, I just used a house teleport and directed it to Polinovich and took some coins. So you need Polinovich teleport and coins. Um, you could use a Pharaoh Skepta if you have that. Uh, I teleport to Polinovich, run south, and take the carpet to soften him. Yeah, so finding Bob, you essentially wear the Caspi Camino and you click locate and you move the whiskers. Um, and the direction the arrow points in when the eyes are lighting up, that's where Bob is. Um, it could takes it can be quite frustrating, but just search Bob a tale of two cat locations and that'll show you the most common locations where you'll find him. So this is my first ever guide on RuneScape and because it's a brand new quest and I've, this guide is pretty much the first guide out there, 100 percent sure that's the first guide actually released. Um, the fact that this editing took me two hours, I had over three hours of gameplay to look through and then obviously cut it down to about an hour and a half, an hour 45 minutes and I've had to commentate over it. Um, and like I said it's almost half to 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm trying to be as quiet as I can as well. So just apologies for that but I thought it was quite important to get it out there um, because you want to do this quest as early as possible really so if it can help people that's that would be great anyway so I've now traveled to soften him so I'm just going to open the gate and enter and then I want to walk south east and then south to the sphinx by the way you do need your cat speak amulet for this as well so just go south and talk to the sphinx so you do need your cat speak amulet um, but during this time, so hit the first option, um, you'll actually be uh, given a spell which means you do not need a cat speak amulet to talk to cats. Um, but initially, you do need the cat speak amulet first. So, there we go, that's the spell. Just keep it and continue. And now we need to go to uh, Luna Island. So, I just use a uh, Duna to teleport to a bank and get some runes out for a moon clan teleport you can get there any other way that you know and I bring a seal of passage with me at the same time so get to moon clan island or lunar island as quick as you can whichever way you're using 
Um, if you have 99 mage, you can just use a spell book swap on your magic cape and then use the moon clan teleport. If not, then you can go to Relica, run up north, and travel by the boats. So just run southeast as you would normally do to go to the uh, Luna Altar and talk to the Mansa here. So say you're talking about Bob's memories, third option, hit spacebar and hit yes please. <coughs> You'll be given a vial and this is quite similar to the quest. So you should have one astral rune, use your hammer on the astral rune and then use the uh, ground astral rune on a piston and mortar and you will get ground astral rune. So once you've done that you need gout weed as well. If you haven't got gout weed then I'm quickly um, showing here in the background how you get gout weed. So teleport to Trollhelm, Trollheim anyhow you can. Go to the west side to the Troll Stronghold. So we've had to get gout weed previously as well in one of the quests I can't remember. So you enter the stronghold and you run all the way south all the way south to some stairs, you can go down the stairs and then slightly north you enter this little entrance so you go down and then you're in the special area so it's a bit of a maze um, I'm sure you remember once you're here now um, might take a few times but just just go for it and you need to get to the end to get the gout weed Okay, when you get the gout weeds, you get knocked out and uh, you can make the potion now. So use the, uh, well, teleport back to Luna Island. Uh, I use the Moon Clan teleport once again, but whatever your ways, do that. And um, what you want to do is with the vial, so I just bank some of my tally taps here. Use the vial on the sink here, so you fill it up with water. And then use the gout weed on the vial and then the, uh, the astral rune onto the vial and you get your dream potion. So now you need to get ready for a fight. Bring a tinder box and um, bring some melee gear. You don't want to bring range. It must be melee gear. Um, and you're going to be fighting a ranger. So bring good range defense. I've just got quite welfare gear here. I've bought some good things, helmet nades and a whip. Um, but I believe crush weapons are the best weapons. That's what's been found out now. Um, so for my invent, I've just taken some bruise, a couple of prayer potions and a super combat potion. So like the brazier, and then drink your dream potion and you'll enter the dream here talk to not bob and then hit spacebar continue all the way and then enter the barrier to the north to fight robert so pray range pot up and put piety or whatever you have on and just fight this ranger there's no uh, difficult mechanics there's this see if you can hide from this as soon as you see that you want to run run behind a pillar and um, you'll avoid his uh, special attack and he will eventually call you back out to face you um, he says face me you coward um, but when he does say this you really want to want run away because you hurt really, really hard as he did on me there so just normal just fight him as normal quite simple boss hits quite hard can be quite tricky um, as you can see I struggled quite a bit um, but the main thing is as soon as he says see if you can hide from this run behind a pillar and you should be fine so not bad mechanics um, not a bad boss so once you kill Robert the Great Bob will then remember everything and that will be his memories back You'll just get a cutscene here, it's quite a long cutscene.
So once the cutscene is finished, you will come back to the Lunar Island place that we entered and you will talk to Bob. So just hit enter, or continue with the spacebar and Bob will just tell you a bit of information about where these various pieces are. So the first one we want to do is we're going to go to Karazi Jungle. So hit the bank and uh, just you need some coins um, and a machete and axe. So I just teleport to Ardon and I take the boat to Brimhaven and then Brimhaven to um, Shiro Village. So just cross the gangplank, go down south and you should find um, Hafiji there and use that to teleport to to travel to Shiro Village. Once you're at Shiro Village, uh, make sure you have your machete and axe. Uh, I do that now. and then make your way towards the Karazi jungle. So you want to run east and open the wooden gate. Carry on east and open the gate. And then climb over the cart. Once you climb over the cart, run down south and now I'm going to chop through this jungle area. So the best place to do this is between these two trees here. Chop down the bush. Once you've done the bush, then chop down the jungle tree right in front. And then chop down the tree that is slightly to the east side, or the west side, or to the right of your character. And you should go straight into the jungle. So once we're in the jungle, what we want to do is we want to go all the way to the southeast corner. So get the map open there, you want to go right to the southeast. So just keep on running to the southeast. Quite funny here, I actually get a random event from Evil Bob. Thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, carry on going southeast and you should find a cave entrance. So once you go southeast, just here you can see there's a cave, so you want to enter the cave. And this is another maze. Um, this maze is quite tricky, make sure you have a good amount of food for this because there are many traps as you can see there. So you want to basically hover your mouse against the walls to see where the traps are and you want to disable them otherwise they hit too hard um, so I put a map of the maze on the screen as well um, and you can also just follow my pathing towards the center as well um, so yeah make sure you have enough food and try to avoid the traps as much as you can um, there are monsters here so the red ones are melee so if they hit you protect melee the blue ones are mage and the green ones are ranged so you need to pray accordingly because they do hit quite a bit um, but yeah, so just follow me in the background if you would like. Um, I do get lost one or two times. There's a lot of dead ends, so it's quite a tricky maze. Um, or just do it yourself and follow the uh, picture of the map I have on the screen right now.
Okay, so once you get through the maze, um, you will find this little area over here. And um, all you want to do is just click on it, take from the plinth, then you should take the piece from the plinth. Um, you can click on the plinth again, it will take you to the center, or you can just teleport out. So now we want to go get the other pieces, so get a ghost speak amulet out, get a glory out, and get some ectophile out. You will also need a glass blowing pipe and two molten glass and a dragon stone for this bit. And some food. So first, what you want to do is travel to Varrock, so teleport to Varrock. And you also need a spade. Once you get to Varrock, just travel north into the palace and you want to go to the library, the famous library of Varrock. So keep going north in the palace, all the way to the north room, go through the door and talk to Rodo, the library. So Rodo should be in the library, just talk to him and ask about Tristan. And hit spacebar, enter, enter, enter. And he will tell you to find a book. So the book is actually in the second bookcase from the north, um, as you can see where I searched just now. And you should get a red book. Um, so just um, you can click on it but it will tell you to give it to Rodo so click on Rodo once again and he will explain the book to you so essentially what he says is that we need to go to Port Phasmatis and that's why we have our ectophile so after you talk to him after hitting spacebar just hit your ectophile so teleport using your ectophile and then run south to enter the little town so just enter Port Phasmatis and you want to talk to a villager so there's a villager right next to the door just talk to the villager and hit spacebar make sure you have your ghost speak amulet on and hit spacebar and then you want to go all the way south And just east of the general store, you want to go to this house here with the cooking range. Right there. And you should find Sarah right there. So just talk to Sarah and hit the spacebar. And she will tell you that you need to go to Drainer Village. So this is why we have a glory. Use your glory and teleport to Drainer Village. Once you teleported to Drainer Village, run up north. Go all the way north. We're going to go to the Drainer Manor and actually talk to Ava um, or Ava, obviously from Animal Magnetism Quest. So all the way north. So once you're on the manor, just go to Ava as normal, enter the doors, enter the other door at the north, and then you need to go to the west side south door, and then through the bookcase and then talk to Ava. So hit spacebar and then choose the third option about the key pieces and just hit continue again so she will tell you to make a device so what you do is you just use your glass bone pipe on the molten glass and if you have the dragon stone as well you'll make the orb locator so talk to her again and select the third option once again and she will talk to about the orb and then she will enchant it or change the orb so now you have a locator orb just like master blue scrolls you can just click on it and it will tell you which direction to go towards um, and it will damage you if you're quite far away from it. Um, so what you want to do is actually you want to go to uh, Canifis and it will be in that sort of where the ghasts are. Um, so use a Canifis teleport or use your house teleport and if you have a Carol teleport in your house or an ancient spell book, um, you need to get to Canifis. So actually you and you need a spade, make sure you have a spade. 
So I should use my house teleport and then use the Carol portal. So once in cannabis, just go west. As you can see, when you fuel the locator orb, it will damage you and it will actually show you where to go. So it pulls towards the southwest. So I just make my way to the southwest. Go through the gates and then run south and just click on your locator orb and try to find it again. So mine says go directly south, so that's exactly what I do. As you go south, just use your locator orb again, and you can see mine still says south, so I carry on south. And I use it again, and it tells me to go north, so I go back a bit north. Uh, and you just need to play around with it like this so make sure you have some food because you take damage uh, and then yeah you get into fine margins like this northeast and then southwest and you should be able to find the spot and then just dig at the spot and you'll find the key piece so that's two pieces now we need another two so the next one we're going to do is this one is in the uh, core end so what you want to get is a light source and a xerox talisman from the bank um, if you don't have a Xerox talisman, you can go via port serum or any other method you do to get current from a house portal or whatever. And you want to go to the Shazian house area. So this is the first option on the Xerox uh, talisman. Once you get to the first option, I'm just going to open up the world map here and show you where you need to find this person. So just run west first. And there you go, it's just south of the bank, slightly west. That's where we need to go. So go west and then north towards the bank and then just southwest um, tent is where we need to go. Okay, and talk to uh, the person here, Amelia. And hit spacebar to continue. She'll talk about some crypts that we need to go towards. So the crypts are actually south of this place, directly south. So on the world map, if you see, if you go south from here, there's the dungeon sign. That's actually the crypts. That's exactly where we need to go. So make sure you have your light source um, and some food. You definitely need some food here. So the crypts are an interesting place. Essentially, um, you need to go downstairs to the main uh, puzzle area. Um, and there's a lot of skeletons and mages and everything that can damage you. Um, so just need to use some protection prayers there. Um, and once you're down in the crypts, as you can see here, um, you essentially just want to tank the monsters and just find the stairs that are present. So once you're here, just go down the uh, entrance. And as you can see, it's a bit of a maze-like area uh, with lots of NPCs. Um, so it looks quite confusing, but you just want to leave the premises and find some stairs um, that will go downstairs. It's quite confusing to me at first, um, but obviously you get a hang of it later on. Um, so yeah, put protection prayers on and just try to find some stairs. It'd be good to have a stamina potion here if you would like to do that as well. So at this point I was actually quite confused. Um, but I got I got the idea a bit later on. So yeah, it's me and Aiden <laughs> did a few things in this quest together. So as you can see in the corners, you can see that there are some stair signs. You just want to see if you can actually access those stairs. Um, so I'm just going to the corner here. There's nothing there, so you need to go back up. Um, Aiden checked those stairs there. They weren't anything there. I just checked if it was the same for me. And as you can see, there's a stair sign there, but the stairs are not accessible. So that's obviously not where we want to go. So you just go find another portion of stairs. So I go north again, and there are stairs which I can take. So climb down the ladder. Once you go down the ladder, I think this is actually different for different people, because um, I came here before, 
when I was in the beginning and it was completely different to this so I, when I left and I came back down it was different so I think it is different and this was easy just went north and went able to climb down climb down and then this should be the bottom floor and as you can see in the center there's a a, a different sort of area so you just want to make your way towards that area so if you get the same sort of crypt as me you can just follow the same path that I did but if not don't worry just keep finding the stairs in the corners or in the middle um, and you'll get there eventually so this is the main puzzle area there are four plinths surrounding um, an initial tomb first you want to inspect the tomb and you'll get this message here and then when it closes you will get a, another inscription on the tomb which is this and this is very important um, in helping where to place the uh, statues so there are four plinths as you can see <clears throat> and there are four statues in the corners um, and these statues if you examine them it will show you who the statues are of so for example that bus there is Robert uh, and so on and so on so you essentially have plinth on the north, east, south and west place and you want to put the corresponding bust or the statue on each plinth so use the inscription so for example it will say the one from a location is sat at the north of the table so using the table which is about to come on the screen you use that location and match it to the bust name and place that on the north table so if it says the one from Saranthium is located at the north of the table Saranthium is Camorra so Camorra will go to the north and then you want to do the south plinth and the south plinth will say the inscription will say opposite the one with a crossbow for example and crossbow is avius so you put avius south so you have north and south and then to find the west one you can read the inscription and it should be quite clear it might say something like the one with a sword ask the person on the left or something like that and you would put that person on the west side and then obviously east you can work out um, the person you've not done so just read the inscription and try to figure out who's north and who's south uh, and it will be different for everyone so use the table on the screen as well um, to try to work that out I'm not sure what happens if you do it and you get it wrong I don't think anything happens um, so just rearrange them accordingly um, so best of luck with that and good luck Okay, so once you've done that, we want to get the final key piece, which is actually fighting the Vorgaf Dragon Boss. Um, so gear up for this, you want to use your best ranging gear that you can, having an antidote or a serpentine helmet, and I've brought along quite a few brews and ruby bolts. You need also an anti-fire potion. So this boss is actually in Relica, so what you want to do is get to Relica initially, so I use a house teleport redirected. I run north and you want to enter the chief's area here and talk to Brunt. And select the third option and talk about dragons and he will tell you about Vorgaf and how you can uh, go and fight him now. So after you're talking to him you can just go north, slightly northwest to the docks. And at the docks, you need to talk to Torfin. Hit continue. And he will say if you're ready to go, and just hit the first option, I'm ready if you've geared up. If not, then you can bank and come back again. So, Volkoth, the boss. Uh, interesting boss it's not too difficult but if you don't understand the mechanics you will die literally every single time um, so I did die a couple of times but I'm just going to show you the mechanics that you need to understand so drink your anti-fire potion drink your range potion and climb over the ice chunks you should be protecting mage against Volkaf um, and obviously try to use eagle eye and your best DPS possible 
So once you enter, he will get full awake and he will start attacking you. So there are various attack styles. So this is one attack style, uh, just a normal mage hit. And this is a uh, venom attack. So these attacks aren't too bad. The one you want to look out for is when he spits out uh, green or poisonous spots. So I'll show you that now. Okay, so when he does this, he's going to do this very rapid attack, which you can see is just constantly hitting you. Um, I was trying to out-eat it, but there was literally no point, uh, and at this point, there was no chance, really. So if you do die at Volcaf, you can go back to Torfin and collect all your items. Um, but as you can see here, you need to click Collect, and you have to actually unlock the item, so 100,000 coins. So once you hit Unlock and you pay the 100k, you can then collect all your items. So I went again uh, for round two, um, and there is a technique. I actually took a BGS. You can take a Dragon Warhammer as well, um, and spec it out to lower the boss's defense. Obviously, hit a zero on the first go, but the second spec was quite good. Put on my range items again, and protect Mage and stand back and attack. Um, so yeah, the main attack I'd say is probably that green attack followed by the rapid attack. Um, and there's also one where he freezes you. So here, what I started doing is you just need to run back and forth, back and forth. So using two tiles, just running back and forth. Um, and that you can avoid that rapid sort of attack. So that's the main mechanic you need to understand. And the other one is here. When you get frozen, he actually spawns something that you need to kill there. So if you don't, you take damage like I did there. Apart from that, just protect mage and tank everything else and start uh, attacking it. So here, once again, he splits out the green poison. I just move one forward, one back, one forward, one back. It's a bit messy here, um, but if it was a bit more smooth, I wouldn't have taken any damage. So don't worry about attacking Volcaf in this stage. Just run back and forth to avoid his hits. Once you once you avoid that, you can just go back to normal, eat up, and continue the kill. You can also disable your prayers as well, I believe. Um, so just maybe have quick prayer set. So look, he freezes you and then he spawns the spawn here and you want to attack it before it comes to you to avoid taking damage and that is basically the main mechanics of Volcaf, not too bad um, but that's that rapid attack is you know, this one here is very deadly so make sure you get a hang of that and just continue to kill Volkov that purple attack by the way is the one that disables your prayers just in case you're wondering and there you go he dies so after you killed Volkaf, you want to run north, all the way north, and you want to go up the stairs. Basically, you want to enter his lair. So once you go up the uh, stairs, so you need to click on the ice chunks to climb over them. Go up this uh, sort of upway path, go to the west side, and then go north and across the bridge. Once you go across the bridge, just go south, down the slope. And then you see the cave, and you want to enter that cave. Um, I actually pray mage before I enter this cave because of the warning message, but you don't need to pray anything. It's actually quite safe. Just enter the cave. Um, there's only a scorpion or a spider there that actually hits you, and it's a very low level. So once you're in, uh, you want to make your way uh, around the area and find some notes. So I just do this here. You just want to go around the periphery and inspect um, the different things that you can inspect. So there's some ancient machinery there. If you inspect that, you'll get some notes. So that's the spider I was talking about. So we should get some old notes after you inspect that. So just go around the whole periphery. Um, so I'm going literally from from the entrance, the west side, down the south side, to the east side, to the north side, and back to the entrance, um, inspecting all the things. So if you carry on going south and then east, you'll find some more ancient equipment which you can inspect for another note. And just carry on going around. some ancient machinery right in the east corner, southeast corner. 
inspect that and you'll get some more notes. And I travel north up the east wall. You can see there's a door here. Um, we'll come to that right uh, near the end. Just west of the door, there's another ancient incubator which you can inspect for some notes. And then you want to go north. So the door is locked. We need to pull a lever, which we'll do in a bit. So I just just read the notes. I'm not sure if that makes any difference, but that's what I did. And inspect the ancient equipment in the northeast side. And just on the north wall, there should be another ancient incubator which you can inspect and find a final note. And that should be all the notes that we need to gather. So now I was talking about that lever. So with the lever, what you want to do is you want to actually, from the entrance, you want to go to the southwestern side, so the place where we started. And right in the corner, just over here, you should be able to see a lever. Not here. So turn my camera around, you can see a pull lever there. The trick with this lever is you want to pull it and you want to run as quick as you can to the east side because if you don't get there in time, the door will actually close. So pull the lever and run and as you can see the door is open. And make sure you have two inventory spaces free here because you need, you're going to get two items. And then just search the chest and you get the key and a last piece. So finally we have all four pieces and a key. The next step is to actually forge the pieces together to make the final key. So, just bank uh, with a games like this, teleport to Barbarian Outpost, run all the way south and take the Whirlpool into the area where the Mithril Dragons are. Make sure you have all four pieces with you, a hammer and the key. So once you're down, you want to put Protect Mage on, go down the stairs and go to the north east, uh, the southeast corner where you would go for Mithril Dragons and climb up the stairs. Once you climb up the stairs, you want to actually run to the west side. And you should see a, a door sign. You want to enter that door to the north. And you also need fire, fire, fire spell here. So I bring fire wave. And you just use fire wave on each of these three dragon heads. And that lights them up. Okay, so once you do all three heads, you uh, get a message, so you can head back through the Mithril door, which we entered from. And we just go back the way we came, so we're going to go all the way east, back to the Mithril Dragons. Down the stairs. Once we go down the stairs, you want to go all the way to the west side. The southwest side, where barbarians are. Remember to protect mage. Once you get here, just climb up the stairs, the rough steps, and then run south. <coughs> so you can turn your protect from mage on, there's nothing here. Once you get here, you'll find some anvils. Um, so essentially just click on the anvil, smith anvil, and you should make the four pieces into one key. Just like that. So now you have the key, we can go bank and um, we can get our dig site pendant out. Uh, make sure you get two Varric Tellies, a Falador Teleport, an RD Teleport and a Relica Teleport. And basically you want to go back to the uh, the island. So the way we do this, or I do this, is a dig site pendant uh, to the dig site. And then board the ship and then travel with the uh, junior and lead navigators. And then run all the way west and north again to the boat, take the boat to the island. So travel the navigators, run all the way west. Drink a stamina potion if you need to. Run west to the jungle. And then run north.
and you should get back to the rowing boat so just click on travel rowboat and you will be back on the island so as previously you want to go to the house of the steps so keep running north and move slightly towards the northwest side and then go up the stairs once you go up the stairs go south down the trapdoor and then go north down the staircase and you'll be back into this lair area again go down climb down one more stairs and you'll be back at the big door uh, with some of your friends um, so this time we can actually use the dragon key on this grand door and it fits perfectly and you will be giving a small little cutscene here which makes you go through now once you're here just run all the way north keep going all the way north don't worry about the barriers on the sides here it's got all the way north and your friends are now here uh, and then you can see the dragon right there literally bathing so click on Dallas Jones and talk to him and they'll talk about the dragon and you will go into a long cutscene which is quite an interesting cutscene actually um, so maybe enjoy it um, but I'll stop talking for the cutscene Okay, so once the cutscene is over, you'll just talk with uh, Jardik and Bob again. Just keep hitting spacebar to continue. And you're basically talking about that you need help and that you should go find um, the armies of RuneScape, essentially, to come back and combat this. So that's why we have Varok Teleport, Ardoan Teleport, and Falador, and Relica Teleport. So the first place you want to go is to Varok. So use your Varok Teleport to teleport to Varok. Teleport to Varok and run north to the palace. Q 
keep running north. We want to talk to King Rold. So go through the initial doors and go east into the room where King Rold is and talk to him. Option one, Dragon's Threat and hit spacebar. And now we need to go to the other cities, so I actually end up going to uh, RD first. So you use the Ardon uh, Teleport, or Ardugni, or RD. Use the teleport and then head west towards the castle as well. So head all the way west, I'm going to take the bridge over this small river, into the castle, keep on going west, enter the initial doors, and climb up the staircase. And you should find King Lathas in the room, just like to the east side, right there. Talk to him and press 1 about dragon threat and hit spacebar. And then we can go to Falador. So hit your Falador teleport. Once you're in Falador, simple. We know the where the white, the where the white knights are. So go south into their Falador castle. Go to the south large circular room and climb up the staircase once, and then climb up the staircase twice. And right there you should find Sir McVars and click 1 for Dragon Threat and hit Spacebar. After you finish the conversation, finally we can go to Relica. So hit your Relica Teleport and go north and we want to talk to Brunt again who is the chief of this area. So go into the little town hall and talk to Brunt and hit option number 3 about the dragon threat and hit spacebar. So once you've done that, use your Varric Teleport and go back to King Rold in the palace, which is north. So just as before, pass the doors and then slightly east into the room with the quest line. Talk to King Rold. Once you've spoken to King Roll, he'll tell you to enter the dining room where all of the leaders have assembled. So if you enter there, you can see all of the different leaders who have assembled to fight. So once you're there, just hit spacebar and listen to the plan. And then King Roll will eventually ask you what you think of the plan. You can choose option one or option two, it doesn't really matter. So I just chose option one. So yeah, you can do any option, but I just chose one, it's a good plan. And then Bob will have a quick word with you and he'll tell you to speak to you outside, so you'll automatically go outside. Once you do that, just click on to Bob to talk to Bob. And basically Bob will tell you that if you can kill Galvec, you can also kill Zorgoth, that they're both connected. So that's essentially what he tells you, um, and that is the plan basically. So keep it and continue. I thought it's quite quite a cool, interesting quest to be honest. That's why I was reading quite a lot of this dialogue, um, and I haven't sped it up as well. 
So after you finish talking to Bob, Bob, you want to bank, get your relic, a teleport, and get your gear ready for the final fight. Essentially, this is a long-winded process to get to the final fight. Um, so I would actually recommend getting to the last phase, the boss phase, and then teleporting out and going back to it. Because essentially, it's like four or five checkpoints. If you get past one point, um, if you leave, you can actually, you don't have to do that bit again. So go north to Relica and travel with Torfin. And you will then join the fleet of all the armies, which I thought was pretty cool. So this is the first phase. Essentially, you're on a ship, and there are um, some people rowing. And there's obviously um, dragons flying about, which are attacking the boat. So your job is to maintain the ship integrity for at least four minutes. So if you have four invent spaces, you'll automatically be given a water can, some swamp paste, um, swamp tar, and some potions. So basically you need the water to douse the fire and you fill the broken holes with the swamp tar and the potions you can help rejuvenate um, the warriors and a hammer is used to fix the masts. So as you can see I forwarded it because it's actually quite straightforward. Once you stand there all you need to do is see where the damage is done. So as you can see your fire was there so you douse that fire, you heal that feminine warrior and you just want to keep on doing this and maintaining it. So every time you see the fire just make sure you um, sort those areas out. So heal warriors, um, fill the leaks, douse the fires and uh, fix the masts. That's essentially it um, and it, it's not it's not too difficult if you if you do everything properly make sure you heal the warriors, make sure you fix the masts um, otherwise um, it does get quite bad in the last minute. I did fail actually once or twice. You can see there you repair the masts, don't forget about them and always heal the warriors. So that's all you got to do, um, and make sure you do that. You can try this many times, this is the first phase, it's not a problem. Okay, so once it comes to the end of the four minutes and you maintain the ship integrity, as you can see it gets pretty intense at the end, so you have to actually be quite quick. Um, you get another cutscene, uh, where you can see the island and you basically get bombarded with dragon fire. So the cutscene ends, it doesn't end, it begins, and you're basically alone on the ship. And essentially everyone else has gone to fight the dragons and you just remained where you are. So this phase is essentially you travelling to the island or the main fight area um, via jumping gaps and crossing debris. So as you can see you'll be exiting the cutscene and you can go to the west side and jump the gap. Walk across the boat and just find um, actions. So jump gap, so you're going to jump the gap. Um, that's a massive gap we just jumped. <laughs> Um, as you can see, you don't want to climb up the ship's ladder, that's actually quite useless. Um, but yeah, you're going to jump gaps and cross debris. So don't go up the ladder here, go back down the ladder. If you do that, then cross, the, jump the gap. Um, and then you can cross the debris here. And this is actually a quite long-winded uh, pathway, actually. Um, jump to the wreckage, and you, you can fail it and you will take damage, so it's actually quite long. Um, so this is quite self-explanatory, um, I won't continue talking for this, just keep on jumping, finding the uh, action buttons, and there will be dragons attacking you, like can you see this green dragon in the air, there will be a blue dragon, a red dragon, the same thing, um, but they don't hit too hard, but make sure, make sure you drink an anti-fire potion.
Um, so once you climb up this first initial rope ladder, you can actually see a red dragon who is being fought by some of the warriors. Um, and it's actually quite good if you just attack the dragon and help them kill it. Um, and then continue on the path just as usual. Um, there should be some more people ahead as well. So, like I said, it's quite a long way um, to go. Um, just keep crossing the debris and jumping the gaps. They made it really long. And once you climb up this other rope ladder, you'll find there's an iron dragon. Um, so just help kill off this iron dragon as well and then continue as normal again.
just one more rope ladder and you'll find a green dragon or brutal green dragon um, and just like before just attack this brutal green dragon um, it won't attack you so it's not a problem just kill it off and then keep on going ahead towards the final battle And then once you get to this final area, you climb up this rope, you can actually see Bob and Bob will start talking to you. Just hit spacebar and continue. And then we need your help to kill these couple of blue and green dragons. So these dragons will actually get aggressive to you. Um, so what you have to do is you have to cross this debris here. And as you can see, the blue dragon actually becomes aggro and so does the green dragon. So just kill them as you would normally kill blue dragons and green dragons. It's actually really, really quite easy. I think a Hasta and a melee gear would be quite good here, um, but range is perfectly fine and quite safe as well, especially for the last boss. Um, so yeah, just kill the blue dragons off. There should be two blues and two green dragons, um, and just kill them. Okay, so once you kill the final green dragon, you'll go into a nice little cutscene. 
pretty cool cutscene. You can see these Farrakh Farrakh guards, and here comes the boss. Literally one one bangs them to be honest. Um, kills three guards, kills four guards, and then it's basically you and Bob remaining. Pretty cool cutscenes in this quest to be honest, and then Zorgoth is also there. Um, so remember they're connected, you kill one, you kill the other. He shoots at me and he actually <laughs> accidentally kills Bob. I mean, you've got to save yourself really. I jumped out of the way and Bob, fortunately, is, is now gone. Rest in peace, Bob. And so the cutscene continues, you get a black dragon that spawns. And now this is near the final phase, like second last phase. You want to basically kill the black dragon, make sure you have anti-fire potion and just attack the black dragon. But what you need to be careful is, did you see that fire blast that just landed there? That's actually uh, uh, the boss. The boss, you can see him right now on my left side of the screen. He's quite stationary, you can just see his head. Make sure when you're doing this phase that you can see his head. As you saw there, he lifts his arms up, moves his head back, and that means he's doing a special attack which can hit up to hundreds. Um, and you really want to stay away from it. So what I did was I stayed on this side, like you see I'm on the east side of the ship, so there you go, he lifts his hands up, I move to the west side of the ship and you avoid that massive sort of fire attack so make sure whilst you're attacking the dragons that you have uh, the boss on the north side or on the uh, left side of your screen, as you can see right now he's stationary, not doing anything, there you go, lifts his hands up and you want to move out of the way, so that's how I did it, I just moved from the uh, east and west side of the boat or up and down on the boat um, to prevent his attack and continued to attack the dragons so I think there's a total of six dragons you kill like this there's like a black dragon and you go all the way up to a rude dragon um, so it does take quite a few supplies um, but most importantly just make sure you don't get hit by the boss's uh, fire attack so you might have to pray melee and pray range and mage against some of these dragons that was quite close there even if you stand one square away from that damage you get hit like 50s so make sure you keep an eye on the boss and you don't take any damage um, so yeah I think that's pretty much the main me mechanics in this phase um, quite simple just keep on attacking the dragons and avoiding the attacks so good luck
So the final dragon is actually this rune dragon. Um, and just keep on doing what you've been doing this whole time. The rune dragon has this attack, as you can see those sort of uh, flickery uh, lightning sort of things. You want to move out of the way, like I do here. So essentially you're, you're dodging two things this time, uh, the boss and the rune dragon special attacks. Um, but it's not too bad, you just need enough food to survive this phase. Once you get past this rune dragon, you're on the final boss fight and you f you're safe. So if you die now, you'll go straight to the boss fight. So that's the most important thing. So once again, you get another really cool cutscene of you and your fellow warriors. Um, but he spawns a couple of brutal black dragons and um, this is the final fight. So I'll try to explain the mechanics as we go along. So as soon as the fight starts, uh, you want to pray mage and put on eagle eye or rigor or whatever you have and you want to hit the boss. And here is a few incidents of how not to do it. So if you do die, trust me, it's normal, everyone dies. Okay, so initially what you want to do is you want to attack uh, Golvac. Uh, use your range. As you can see, he still does the sort of lifting the hands up. That's his special attack again. So in this first phase, you can see these fire traps or fireballs. Just do not go anywhere near them. Well, you can go near them, but you don't want to touch them or go on them. Um, and then just keep on attacking Gorwak and uh, avoiding that sort of fire attack. As you can see, when his hands go up, that's his special 100 plus damage attack. So I was just going back and forth like this, attacking him like this, and every time he did it, I'd go back. If he did it again, I'd go forward again. So just keep on attacking him. All these other attacks, you can actually um, tank out. There we go. That's his main attack that you want to avoid. And just keep brewing up to the max as much as you can, and restoring, uh, and make sure your range level is at a good level. So this first phase is quite easy, you just want to avoid the fire traps. If you stay in the position I'm in and you go back and forward, two, three steps, you can avoid his special attack and just keep on attacking him. So nice and easy phase. And I think ruby bolts are actually more effective here. Uh, I brought diamond bolts with myself for some reason. So yeah, I think at 75% his second phase begins. So this phase is really simple. Avoid that main attack of his by going back and forward and just don't step on the fire traps. Very nice and easy. So as you can see, once we hit 75% of his health, he will actually teleport to the other side of the boat. So here we go. Just make sure you safe up because there's no point risking it here. Can hit quite high if you mess up. Make sure you have an anti-fire potion. I bought an extended anti-fire and that lasted me the whole kill, I think. So that's pretty good. So yeah, he teleports here to the uh, um, west side of the boat um, and it's similar now. Basically, you just want to avoid his special attack again. And the other attack he has now is a sort of tidal wave attack, which I'll show you. So there's a special attack which you want to avoid. Same as usual. That attack there basically drains your run energy, so you lose run energy. You did it twice on me there. That's why I didn't bring a stamina for this, so I don't think it's any helpful at all. Um, so that's one attack. This another attack, uh, which is the purple or pink one, which actually drains your prayers. This one here, you just need to tank out. Hits quite hard, that's why you're going to use some food. But yeah, I was just moving left and right on the ship to avoid a special attack, and that was it really. Just keep on attacking him, getting your DPS as possible. That That's the purple-pink attack, which drains your prayer. So just make your quick prayers um, the prayers that you use, and you can click on it straight away. No problem at all. Make sure you have an antidote if you don't have a serpentine helm, by the way. So keep on attacking. Once you get to 50%, it will be another phase. So you can hit still quite hard through prayer, so just be careful. Always want to avoid that major attack that he does, can hit literally one hit you. Oh my goodness, it's 
very very late right now it's dedication for this video over nine hours I've been on this <laughs> we're gonna do this we're gonna do this we're almost done so yeah really bad hits here right now I'm doing quite good on supplies so um, not bad yeah, there's the pink attack. Prayers are down. Wow, I did not even put my prayers up here. Unbelievable. I still haven't put my prayers up. What is going on? Anyway, so under 50% here becomes another phase, which is basically the opposite side. And so this is where you use the sort of tidal wave attacks. Um, so this is quite tricky. As you can see, he lifts his hands up, and you get this tidal wave. You want to literally go in between the gap. Make sure you don't hit the tidal waves. I got quite lucky there, I'll be very honest. Um, otherwise you can get hit up to 70s on that as well there's one thing I notice in this phase when he lifts his hands up it's the tidal wave so I'll try to I'll try to see I'll try to time it in now so if you watch the boss here just doing his normal attacks just doing normal attacks right now so he lift his hand up here so you're expecting a special attack or a tidal wave attack and so you can come from both sides so you want to go into the gap and then run run into it because he does his sort of 100 plus special attack at the same time sometimes so you don't want to get caught out so look he's lifted his hands up again so that's a tidal wave go through the gap but make sure you run through the gap because he will do a special attack like that and I just dodged it so make sure you go through the tidal wave gap and you move as well otherwise he'll combo you so here once again tidal wave comes out Make sure you get through the gap and then move through the gap because he does a special attack sometimes straight after, just like that. So that's pretty much it, really. Just keep on avoiding that and attacking him and getting his HP down. Once again, he does it. I think I do mess up initially here and I get quite lucky. Let's see where it is. No, that's not bad. That's not it. So I think the last 25% is the final phase, which is the easiest phase, I think. For me, it was very easy. Sort of really destroy him very quickly. I think that blue blue attack there is like a teleportation spell. He uses it quite a lot in the last phase. Um, apart from the teleporting effect, I don't think it has any difference. See, so almost at twenty five percent health. Look at this. I don't move into that gap, and he does a special attack there, and I literally got so, so lucky that he didn't hit like an eighty three there. So that was really really fortunate. It woke me up for sure. <laughs> So yeah, carry on, trying to get it down to 25%. Pink attack, drain your prayers, so quick prayers on quickly. This should be the final phase coming up now. There you go, so you come straight down into the middle. Here you just want to stay away from him and range him as normal. And just keep an eye out for the same attacks. There you go, his hands go up. That's a special attack, move out the way. He uses his blue attack like this one quite a lot of times. I think he can melee you from here, so I just every time he does I just run back away. Not entirely sure, but just to be safe, there you go, he does it again. I move back out of the way. There's a special attack, move out of the way. 
and you should have the hang of it now. I think that's an attack. I think that's another special attack there, that boulder. Um, I just dodged it. I don't actually know what it does, but just dodged that attack as well. So as you can see, I'm hitting a lot harder, a lot regularly on this guy. I think his uh, defense is finished. You see that melee attack there? You just want to stay out of that range. There's the purple or pink prayer drainage. And that's pretty much almost it. The teleport spell again. There's the earth boulder. Just move out the way. And finally, once you kill him, you'll get a cutscene. Pretty cool cutscene of him and well, both of them dying. And the crew will congratulate you. <laughs> Once you do that, you'll spawn in Berthorp, um, and you'll spawn with the like a sort of funeral or grave for Bob, Bob the cat. Quite an unnecessarily long cutscene, I think. But as soon as it's done, what you want to do is you want to make your way back to the Myths Guild. So I just use a Varok teleport, use the Spirit Tree back to Feldip Hills and um, go to the Myths Guild and talk to Alec where we started the quest and that will complete the quest. So that's the way I do it, Spirit Tree Feld Appeals. And make sure you take 10k, there is a bank there so even if you forget, just get 10k out and you can buy your Myths Cape, uh, Myth Cape and that basically has unlimited teleports to the Myths Guild. So after this initial Spirit Tree run that I'm going to do, it will be no longer because I have the Myth Cape now. So yeah, just go across the bridge to where we started the quest and talk to Alec. Set the second option and hit spacebar. You will get a small black screen and you should get the quest complete sign. After you hit spacebar once, there you go, congratulations. You also have 100k worth of XP. So you can go to Ellen here on the first floor and when you enter it and get 25k XP in any of these combat stats. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, the Myth Cape is on the top floor. But on the second floor, you can actually talk to um, this guy over here with the herbal sign, and he will teach you how to make super anti poisons. And then finally, the Myth Cape is right at the top. If you go to this uh, south side, you'll see Jack here who sells the Myth Cape. Thank you guys for watching, I hope it helped, um, it was very difficult to make, completely knackered, um, but yeah, thank you very much.